Don't you ever wish that people would just make really simple videos for really simple topics, especially related to health? Well, I want to do that with this video. I'm going to make it short, I'm going to make it sweet, make it straight to the point. We're talking about glycemic index versus glycemic load, and this is probably something you've wondered. You've heard glycemic index before, you've heard glycemic load, but maybe you were even afraid to ask, like, what the heck is it and what's the difference? So let's just make it really simple for you, okay? It all comes down to how carbohydrates react within our bodies and what they do, okay? So make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. And then after this video, please check out Thrive Market down below in the description. That's an online grocery store. So I'm able to put like all my uh, keto boxes, my fasting boxes, all groceries that I would normally get, I can consolidate them into like an online grocery box that you guys can therefore go and order. So that way you utilize Thrive Market, get groceries delivered right to your doorstep. So please do check them out after you watch this video. Super awesome deals there. So glycemic index is how quickly a fixed amount of food or carbohydrates get converted into glucose. Okay, so it's, if you have one specific amount, how quickly does that elevate your blood sugar and get converted into glucose, okay? So for example, glucose is 100. It's the highest point that you can get to. So for example, wheat bread is a 75, okay? Carrots are a 40. Broccoli is a 15 and eggs are a zero. It's just, that's just how you measure sort of the carbohydrate glucose density of something. But here's something pretty interesting. So the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition uh, published a study, it was done out of Harvard. Took a look at 12 men gave them nearly identical meals. Okay, so literally they ate the same meal, same calories, the same macronutrients, same proteins, fats, and carbs. The only difference was the glycemic index was 37 in one group and was 84 in another. Okay, so high glycemic versus low glycemic. The participants didn't even know their food was different, okay? Now, what they found is that the high glycemic index caused a big blood sugar spike and then a strong dip below baseline three hours later. But when they looked at their brains under fMRI, they found that the nucleus accumbens was lit up like a Christmas tree. Okay, the nucleus accumbens is the part that is associated with addiction. So we definitely saw that even when food tastes the same, higher glycemic index will make you more addicted to it. So that's why you wanna avoid high glycemic foods. You wanna go low GI, even if it's comparable foods otherwise. Now, what's glycemic load? Okay, see people interchange them and they get them mixed up. Glycemic load is how much a non-fixed amount affects your blood glucose, okay? So again, it's basically our glycemic index multiplied by how much you eat. So we use that same example of wheat bread. Wheat bread is no matter what going to be a 75, whether you eat one piece of wheat bread or 100 pieces of wheat bread. It's still the same glycemic index. It still spikes your blood sugar at the same rate of speed, but glycemic load ends up factoring in how much of it there is. So in this case, wheat bread times two, still 75 GI, but two times the load, okay? The best way to compare it is like caloric density. We say, we look at one piece of food compared to another and we say, oh, well that's more calorically dense than the other. So a simple thing would be like a square of butter might have just as many calories as an entire steak, okay? But it's because the butter is more calorically dense than the steak, right? So it's all about balancing this glycemic index and this glycemic load. So when you look at glycemic load at that number, you wanna understand, well, how much of this food is making how much of an impact in my body. So you should always look at glycemic index and glycemic load because this can carry you over for a longer period of time. Anyhow, that's a basic understanding of it. Hope that it helped clear some simple science up for you and make sure you're coming back here every single day because we've got new videos at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time every day. See you tomorrow.